Welcome to Live Devotions and thank you for joining me today. I'm talking from 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 through 11 and the reason I'm sharing seven virtues that are given to us in the divine nature of God or that Peter talks about here that we begin to experience partaking of the divine nature of God. I'm talking to you about this so that so that you may not be barren or unfruitful in your relationship with the Lord, that you may see the blessings of your relationship with the Lord Jesus, and that you may never grow blind or dim in your eyesight spiritually to see the past is forgiven and cleansed in your new person in Christ, that you may know you have your election and calling sure that you have an absolute entrance into the everlasting kingdom of heaven, that God is awaiting you, are coming there and has a place prepared for you and God wants you to live in that blessed assurance. Jesus is mine, oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. And so I've been talking to you about add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance, which is what we're talking about today. Perseverance talks about steadfastness, patience, endurance. In other words, you stay consistent. Consistency is one of the great, great attributes of the divine nature. Like Peter starts out here, he says, now that you begin to experience through your relationship with Jesus Christ and the Heavenly Father, the multiplying of His grace and of His peace, and you now live free from the corruption that's in the world through loss because you are sharing the divine nature through that relationship. He says, I want you to know what this divine nature is like. So add to, all pre in all perseverance, he says, in all eagerness, keep pursuing through your faith in Christ, this divine virtue and to know this. And then add to that knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, steadfastness, steadiness, stability. You see, that perseverance or steadfastness, remember we used to sing, for those of you that know this, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end, they are new every morning. Oh, what a beautiful song, I, I, I love to sing that song. But you see that steadfastness is a part of the divine nature. You know when it says, when Moses met the Lord in Exodus 34 and saw his glory and heard the Lord cry out, the Lord, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth. That word gracious there is his steadfastness. Uh, 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 no, the word goodness there is loving kindness, steadfast love, the unchangeable nature of his love. God is love, as he says in 1 John 5 or 16. He is love. And that there's a stability about him, or Hebrews 13 verse 8, I think, says Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you see, God wants us to live in a steadfastness in the knowledge of him. And, and I know you understand this because many of you have experienced the presence of the Lord. You know that divine virtue, you know it, and, and you've learned how to live by it, but then all of a sudden you don't know it. Oh, I, and that, I find that life painful. I used to say to the Lord, Lord, I cannot bear the highs of your divine nature and the lows of my nature. I, I cannot bear the pain of that separation. You got to make me steadfast by your divine nature. I've got to become stable. It also creates blows in my marriage. One moment Virginia feels this love of the Father, this presence of God. The next moment she feels the barrenness of my human nature. The, the, the powerlessness, the impotence of that nature. You understand, you have nothing to give. There's no kindness, no grace that comes from heaven. And so the Lord wants you to add to the knowledge of His life-giving Spirit in you, perseverance, so that you will not be barren. You got it? So you will stay steady. So I wanna read you a scripture. And I, I know that you are going to look at me today and say, oh my goodness, I need this. 
I cannot bear that either. When I feel the presence and power of the Lord and I feel so happy and then I feel nothing and I feel so human and earthly and, and I, I, then I struggle in my faith like, God, have you left me and what have I done wrong? And then, then I become all doubting and unbelieving and, I, and then I know that it's not pleasing to the Lord either. So I, I then get all messed up. You see what I'm talking to you about? See how important this is? And, and, and we've been there. I've been there, but praise God. No, I will never act in Jesus' name. I will not act like God's not there and I will not act like He doesn't care. No, God's given me perseverance, steadfastness. And this is what I want to talk to you about. He gives you perseverance and steadfastness to hold firm. And David in Psalm 25, I'm going to read you this, first five verses of that Psalm 25. David lived, uh, David pursued this. He sought it. He sought this. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do, to seek this. He says, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, my living being. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me, Lord. Let me not be ashamed. Let me not be just a mere human being. Let not those people look at me and say, Oh, he's just another man. Lord, don't let them triumph. Let them see that I am your man, a heavenly man, a holy man, a son of God. That's what he's really saying. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let nobody who looks for you be disappointed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. Here it comes. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. That word truth is the word emet, E-M-E-T. It means certainty, stability, truth, rightness, trustworthiness. It, it is derived, that word, from the word amen, A-M-A-N, meaning to be firm, permanent, established. It conveys a sense of dependability, firmness, and reliability. Truth is therefore something upon which a person may confidently stake his life. David prayed the God of truth would continuously preserve him. Scripture speaks of man of truth, the law of truth, especially true God or God of truth. Curiously, Emmet is spelled with the first, middle, and last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Thus, rabbis conclude truth upholds the first, the last of God's creation and everything in between. You see, this steadfastness, you need it for your soul. It is unhealthy for our soul to just constantly be wavering between the divine and the natural. No, we need to live steady in the divine nature, that our flesh is constantly upheld and comforted by that holy life, that we're constantly strengthened by that inward life of the Spirit, that we're not constantly berailed by our weak human nature, but that we, like Paul, know the reality of the sufficiency of grace, that no matter how weak our human nature is, yet we are strong in the Lord and the power of His might and every... Actually, the more you begin to feel the pressure of that weak nature, the more you begin to see the glory of that grace, that you are what you are by that grace, living in this divine nature, this strength, this virtue, and you know it, and you're stable. Oh, it's so important to build a healthy home, to build a healthy life, to build a healthy ministry. People don't want to come to church, and one moment you are flowing like a river and the life of God has flown from you as you share the divine word and the next moment you are dry as a desert and there's no life in the words you speak. That instability of the divine nature is what causes people to feel unsafe when they come. You see what causes people to feel safe is that the grace is always sufficient. That is the power that we receive through Christ, so we'll not be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of Him. And remember, that's what this is really about. Let me, in closing, read you a couple of scriptures. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9 and, uh, and 10, 11, and 12. Listen to this. 
for it is He who delivered and saved us and called us with the calling. And it's holy and leading to holiness, to a life of consecration, a vocation of holiness. And He did it not because of anything of merit that we have done, but because of and in further His own purpose and grace unmerited favor, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. It is that purpose and grace which He now has made known and has fully disclosed and made real to us through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ to an old death and made it of no effect and brought life and immortality immunity from eternal death to light through the gospel. For the proclaiming of the gospel I was appointed, for the proclaiming of this gospel I was appointed as a preacher and an apostle, a special messenger and, and teacher to the Gentiles. And this is why, in closing, listen, I am suffering as I do. Still, I'm not ashamed, for I know, perceive, and have knowledge of, and am acquainted with him whom I have believed, adhered to, and trusted in, and relied on, and I am positively persuaded that he is able to guard and keep that which has been entrusted to me, and which I have committed to him until that day. I believe Jesus is reliable to keep me steady. My stability is that divine nature, that virtue. You see, you've got to be encouraged, dear friends, that He will not fail to give you the knowledge of Himself, <clears throat> because that is Jesus doing the will of the Father. And we are convinced through the self-sacrifice of His death on the cross that He will not fail to do the will of the Father. Read Hebrews 10, verse 5 through 10. It is the will of the Father for Christ to keep giving you His divine virtue. So add to that virtue knowledge, and to that knowledge self-control, and to that self-control perseverance. Live in that continue knowing. I've, I've got another scripture and then I'll, I'll have to stop because my time is up. But oh, I, I, I just, this following scripture I prayed for many years and still do. It lives in my heart because it has helped me to become stable and steady. And, and I suffered with the instability. And I used to have a wrong way of thinking that that was, you know, when I go preach, I am to experience the power. But when I live daily, then okay, I am who I am. But now I've realized, no, Robert, you need to live in the fullness of that life of the Son of God, of the divine virtue day and night and never come out of it. I've seen that is the only way to live free from sin and it's the only way to live holy and well-pleasing to the Father to which we're all called that Jesus has revealed to us as I read to you just a moment ago from 2 Timothy 1 verse 9 through 12. So I close here from 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 and 24. May the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through separate you from the profane things and make you pure and holy consecrated to God. And may your spirit, soul and body be preserved sound and complete and found blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, faithful as he who is calling you to himself and utterly trustworthy. He will also do it, fulfill his call by hollowing and keeping you. You can trust the Lord to make you stable, unshakable, unmovable, no matter what you're going through, no matter what used to ruffle you and frustrate you and irritate you and cause you to fly off the handle or suffer with anxiety explosions, no more in Jesus' name. Stability, dependability, wonderful divine virtue, keeping you stable and calm in the wonderful calming restful presence of the Lord, causing you to be fruitful in the knowledge of Him, causing you to know that that old way of anxiety and flying off the handle is gone and you're forgiven. It has no more dominion over you. You now live in the beauty of what God has made you in Christ. Amen. Have a good day. God bless.